Hi, Andrew Kramer here with creativecow.net. And in this tutorial, we are going to create a flipbook type of effect. Here is kind of the final result. Okay, so as you can see, each frame is kind of flipping up and underneath it is the next frame in the sequence as it speeds up back to real time. Now, just so you know, we are not going to be creating individual frame effects. So we're not just going to take the first 10 frames and give them a page peel effect. It's actually a procedural effect that is applied to the entire footage or sequence and using the time remap function, that's how you will be able to get it to start slow and speed up back to real time. So if I click on time remap, you can see my curve kind of goes from slow up to fast all the way up to real time. Now, just so you know, it took several hours to get this effect to be as streamlined as it is now. So I hope you guys can appreciate that. Also, it's come to my attention that not everyone who watches these tutorials is a native English speaker. So I've decided to just slow the pace down just a little bit so that people who don't speak uh, native English can at least uh, follow along visually. So let's go ahead and get started. What I have here is in my footage folder, I have a running.mov footage. And it's just some footage I happen to have on here. And what we're going to do is create a new composition. So the first thing I'm going to do is drag this footage into the make new comp button and it makes a new comp here. Now the next thing we want to do is pre-compose this layer. So I'm going to choose layer, pre-compose, and I'm going to leave all the attributes in this composition. And I'm going to type put footage here. So if you want to swap this footage out or later you want to retime your edit, you can just do it by reinserting the footage into this pre-composition. So I'm going to choose OK. Now the next step is to add the page peel effect. So I'm going to go over here to my effects and presets and type in page. And it comes up with our CC page turn effect. Now if you don't have this effect, go back to your original After Effects installation disk and there's a folder called Psychor Effects that has some great plugins that you'll want to have. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag this out to my footage. And now you can see there's sort of a page turn effect here as I drag this little controller. And what we need to do is just set up the page turn effect so that it looks uh, you know, a little bit more like the original uh, finished product here. So I'm going to go in here and so the first thing I'm going to change is the fold direction. And we're going to make this negative 35. And that way it's kind of moving up a little bit and just kind of has a good feel to it. Also, I want the radius to be 75 instead of just 50. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is change the back side to none, and that way the back will be a color rather than the actual piece of footage. Now, so depending on how you'd like to do it, it's up to you. And I'm going to make the paper color uh, more of an orange, just to give it more of an artistic look here, actually. More like that. Okay, and now we need to add a keyframe. So I'm going to take the page turn effect by selecting the name and take the controller just off frame here. Then I'm going to set the stopwatch for the fold position and I want to move forward one frame. So I'm going to hit page down or if I zoom in here, I can just go to the next frame. And then at this frame, I want to take the little controller and drag it just until it exits the frame there. And so it's on and then it's off, all in one frame. And that's important and you'll find out why later. Now the next thing we need to do is add sort of our motion blur. Because the page turn effect doesn't use the motion blur of the layer, we just kind of need to cheat that a little bit so that when it folds off it looks like it's going fast and smoother. So we're going to go to the effects presets here and we're going to type in directional blur and we're going to take this drag it back out and we're gonna set the blur length stopwatch to create a keyframe and then move forward one frame 
and set the amount to 30. So that at the first frame, it's zero, and at the next frame, it's 30. So now that we've set that up, we need to set up a loop so that basically this happens for every single frame because the loop, if I hit U on the keyboard, takes up one frame. So we're going to do an expression, and it's very easy. We don't even have to type it in. We're going to Alt-click on the stopwatch, go over here to this little switch here, and we're going to go down to Property and come up to Loop Out Type equals cycle number keyframe zero. We're going to hit that and it types it in and then just click in the gray area to set that and then likewise we're going to alt click on the directional blur click on this property loop out cycle number of keyframes zero and just click out. So what that's going to do and you won't really be able to see here but basically it's going to loop this effect. Now the next thing we need to do is kind of make this page turn effect look a little bit more artistic. Right now it's a little bit flat. So what I'm going to do is take these two keyframes by selecting them and dragging them out a little bit further just so I can see the animation. So as you can see it's it's kind of flat and I want to add a shadow. Well it's a little bit tricky but what I have to do is duplicate this layer. So to do that I'm going to choose edit duplicate and then I'm going to hit U on the keyboard to bring up the keyframes so for this top layer I want to change the render mode of the page turn effect to backside and that basically means only this portion that turns up will render out so if I shut the eye off you'll see that it's all by itself now for this bottom layer we also want to change the render mode to front side only so that now all it is is just this portion and the reason we do that so that we can add a drop shadow that applies only underneath this layer instead of the entire layer. So I'm going to select our top layer, go to the effects presets, I'm going to type in drop shadow, and then I'm going to take this drop shadow effect, apply it to the top layer, and we want to change the direction to the same direction as the full direction, that is negative 35. So we're going to change that to negative 35. And that way the shadow is kind of going in this direction. Then I'm going to change the softness up. So I'm going to drag until it's kind of a nice soft shadow and bring the distance to a little bit more also. Then we can increase the opacity to make it a little bit darker, say 70%. And that looks pretty good. Now, likewise, I want to add a shadow to this portion down onto the paper that would be underneath or in this case the frame that comes afterwards so I'm going to turn on the toggle transparency so we can see and I'm going to drop this drop shadow effect onto our bottom layer then on this layer I'm going to go in here and change the direction actually that's a good direction and we just want to change the distance a little bit and bring the opacity up and maybe the softness just a little bit and that way it kind of casts a shadow onto the frame that's going to be underneath it. Okay, so that's all we have to do for now. And the next thing we need to do is just, if we hold down Shift and hit U on the keyboard, we can bring these keyframes back to occupy only the first and second frame. So as you can see, it's frame one and frame two. Now you may notice that I'm working in frames only. So if you want to do that, just go to the project settings and change it from timecode to frames and that will just let you look at frames only so I'm going to hit OK. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So I'm going to go back up to my project and you can see this composition is called running. We're going to call this first and this is the first composition basically in the cycle and then I want to take this and drag it into a new composition and that way it's all by itself here. Now the other thing we need to do is come back to our first composition and copy an instance of our footage into this composition. So I'm going to select the layer, choose edit, copy, come into here, choose edit, paste. And then what I want to do is offset this after I right click and change the color gold. I want to offset the first layer one frame. 
so if I zoom in, I want to move it over just one frame. And then I want to put this, this footage, which is an instance from here, copied into here. I want to put this underneath it. And then I want to go to the effects controls and just shut them all off. And we could delete them also, but I'll just shut them off for now. And the reason we want to do that is this is going to turn up. This page is going to turn up. And when it does, what needs to be underneath it is the frame that follows so that anywhere in this whole sequence because it's offset by one underneath it is the frame that follows and that's basically going to give us the effect we're looking for now there's a workaround that I discovered and it has to do with the time remapping later and that is on this put footage here composition we need to add a posterized time effect so I'm gonna to go to my effects and presets and type in posterize and posterize time and drag this down and depending on the frame rate of the composition, you want this posterized time to be equal. So in this case, it is 24 frames per second. But if we're working at 25 or 30, just make sure you set the posterized time effect to that amount. Next thing we're going to do is go to our project and take this first two comp. I'm going to hit return on the keyboard. We're going to call this second. And I want to take this second comp or this comp here and put it into a new composition again. Now, inside of this composition is where we do our animation. So I'm going to choose right click, time, enable time remapping. And then I'm going to move forward a few frames and set a keyframe by clicking here. Now, if you're not familiar with time remap, um, basically allows you to change the speed of the clip by using keyframes. In this particular case, we are going to slow it down and then come back up to real time. So first I want to make a little bit more space at the end of the composition. So I'm going to choose Composition, Settings, and we're going to make this twice as long, 202, and choose OK. Then I'm going to hit the minus on the keyboard to zoom out. I want to extend this clip to the end. And what I want to do is slow it down in the beginning. Now, I could just take this keyframe and drag it over, but the problem is, although I'm making this portion slower, I've now sped this up to beyond real time, and we don't want to do that. So I'm going to choose Edit, Undo. Instead, I want to take both of these keyframes and drag them over. And that way, the time from here to here stays constant, and this is slowed down. Now, we also want it to gradually go back up to real time, so I'm going to right-click, choose keyframe assistant easy ease in and that will create a curve that will slowly gradually get it back up to the speed in which real time is playing and if I select time remap I can go into the curve editor and look at my curve now it's not quite perfect so I'm gonna select it and then I'm gonna just drag it down just a little bit so that it really goes slow and then creeps up and that looks a little bit more like our original comp that I showed you that is complete. So let's go ahead and preview this again. You can also hit zero on the keypad to play it back. Okay, let's go ahead and preview it at this point. And we can even shorten the amount of time it goes faster by just dragging this up. Maybe about there. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step, and that is when this plays up to real time, once it starts playing real time, you no longer see the page peel at all. And that's what we want, but at the same time, we need something to kind of graduate it into, you know, not seeing it at all. So going from seeing it to not at all. And what we can do is create a new solid, and let's just make it a little off white and choose OK and choose OK. And what we're going to do is use a strobe effect. So I'm going to type strobe and just drag this out into the layer. And we have a few settings here that are a little complicated for what we're trying to achieve. Basically what we want to do is show one frame on and one frame off. So we want the strobe to operate on transparent so that when it goes to the strobe mode it shuts off and when it's on it's on as you can see here now the strobe duration is how long say it's white 
and the strobe period is how long it takes to be on and off. So for example, a push-up is down and up. A strobe period is on and off. So let's go ahead and bring up the calculator really quick. And what we want to do is kind of figure out what one frame would be if one second is the numbers we're dealing with. So let's do one second divided by our frames per second, in this case 24 and that comes to 0.04. So let's go and change that to 0.04 and the strobe period to twice that, 0.08. And that way it's essentially on and off every other frame. So it may not be perfect, but it'll work for what we're trying to use it for. Now, let's go ahead and hit T to bring up the opacity and let's turn the opacity down to about six. And what we want to do is kind of gradually fade this up and then fade it out again. So let's go and set a stopwatch here, move forward to here, set a keyframe, move a little bit past, back in the real time area, and set another one. And then we're going to turn the opacity down to zero. So it's zero, goes up to six, and here also if we double click we can set it to zero as well so that it slowly fades on and then slowly fades out and we can just stretch this a little more and the reason we don't want it to take up the space in the beginning is because essentially the strobe represents you know a frame passing and in the beginning the frames are going very slowly and the strobing wouldn't look quite right but let's go ahead and preview it at this point in time I'm gonna hit zero on the keyboard Okay, let's go ahead and play this back and see what we have. Okay, now I see there's two little things that we can do to enhance this. That's one, take the white solid and change the transfer mode to additive. And also, let's go back to our very first composition. I forgot to do one little thing. So I'm going to select the first layer, and we want to change the directional blur to negative 35 degrees and that way the blur is going in the proper direction. And then I'm going to select this layer and also go down to the directional blur and do the same thing. I forgot to do that earlier. But no worries. Well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm Andrew Kramer with creativecow.net. You can also visit my website at www videocopilot.net. We have a lot of great video tools and products and other tutorials, so please check us out. Thanks for watching.